me Dr. Bob Doe. And uh, uh, Bob Doe is a, do a good friend of ours for a, quite a long time. He's the most unusual medical doctor you'll ever meet in your life because he has such a heart and a passion for the work of God. And in the early days of, of the Kurdistan work there, the, the work that he did was a real breakthrough in servicing villages and teams. And I could go on and on around the world how God has used Dr. Doe and his heart for medical missions and, and, and just reaching people. But uh, I, I want him to share a vision that's been on his heart, something that God has really started to break through, a positive out of COVID. And I just welcome Dr. Doe to us here today and want him to share with you. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, it is here on the East Coast anyway. Uh, it's great to be with you, and thank you, Pastor Larry, for the kind introduction. And uh, from the very beginning that I, I've been part of Praise Chapel with the Lancaster Fellowship, Pastor Phil Hernandez, I've been involved with numerous, I'd say over a hundred different medical mission trips, a lot of them to Nicaragua, Honduras, and then later Haiti, and then on to Kurdistan of Iraq. But uh, over time, one thing I noticed was that we would see the miraculous. We would see God move. We would see evangelism. We would see people come to know the Lord. We'd see churches planted. And I always ask myself, why not at home? Why not here? And uh, the other half of what God had put in my heart in connecting with Pastor Phil and in the inner city of Lancaster was, what about transforming our cities? What about seeing America revived through the urban context, which is all what has happened already with Praise Chapel. I mean, its very foundations are based on that concept. So the Lord put in my heart, let's do it. Let, let's make this a reality. Let's, let's take the mission field and realize the mission field's right next door. It's right in our backyard. It's right on our job. It's right in our cities. So uh, this idea of combining mission mindset with healthcare and human services became the passion in the late 90s. And we've tried many different times, many different places to actually create a business model, a marketplace model, where we can do these two things together. And uh, back uh, in Lancaster, we had a season where we were able to, through a prison uh, experience and through a homeless uh, clinic uh, that we ran, but we never got to the full-on transformative model of healthcare and human services until God had me go on a sabbatical to YWAM Kona in Hawaii. And out of that, I found out that they wanted us to build a clinic that would serve the community. So since 2015, we've been working with an urgent care. Now we're developing primary care, social services, inner healing models and, and psychiatry models in our clinic there. And we've, we started this model with an understanding that we wanted to create a habitation for the presence of God. Uh, that's, a, that's a buzzword these days, habitate, habitation for the presence of God, because it's his presence, Moses said, that if it goes with us, it will set us apart from the world. And we were able to do that in Kona. We didn't get kicked back. God did many, many, many miraculous healings, even without us trying to pray for people. But more recently, we've actually been intentional in our way of not only praying for healing, but praying prophetic words over people, actually seeing uh, deliverance seeing inner healing, all of it in a business model medical clinic that last year uh, uh, grossed quite a significant sum of money. So we're at this place now where the vision has happened, we're expanding it, and I felt like it's time to share this with a broader network across our nation, particularly in those places where inner city can be reached. Now, if you think about it for a minute, what were the first instructions to the disciples in the Bible? So Jesus took the 12 and he told them to heal the sick, cast out the demons, raise the dead, tell them the kingdom is here. Then in Luke 10, by the way, Luke was a physician in case you didn't know. Uh, so this is, the, this is the gospel according to physician Luke for the inner cities of America. But the, 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 the scriptures there in uh, chapter 10, when he sends out the 72 are really significant. The harvest is ripe. The workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send the workers. Then he goes on to describe healing, deliverance, new life, 
and the supernatural aspects that indicate the kingdom has come to you. So we're, we're wanting to see across this nation uh, different groups in different locations, not necessarily owned by us or operated by us, but stimulated to create kingdom health and human service models. And that means health care in the sense of regular health care, medical care, psychiatric care, inner healing, uh, um, addiction training, but also social work, such as working with the homeless, such as battered women, such as foster care, such as you can just go on and on in the human services. And what's unique about the inner city of America, maybe I'm over speaking this, but I suspect that in most inner cities, the human service and the health service network are run by Hispanic and African-American leaders. The preponderance of people doing the work and therefore probably the preponderance of those people have a basis in Christian faith. But are they really using that Christian faith where they're planted to transform to this kind of Luke 10 model, this kingdom is here model? So that's what we're attempting to do. And we've connected with groups in Kansas City. We've connected with groups in San Diego, Lancaster, the Mohawk Reservation in New York. And little by little, I'm watching a movement begin of people who say, wait, we want that too. How do we do that? What do we got to do? And so we're beginning to uh, dream that we could see multiple places around the world start to develop these networks. And in that dreaming, perhaps part of our role is to encourage to stimulate and maybe even to help train and equip. So it, I just felt like Praise Chapel as it's connected to the inner city is a good place to start. And, uh, and it may, it's not for the pastors to do this. I just really want you to hear that. that. Every one of the pastors is busy enough doing what pastors do and they have that responsibility to the sheep. But in the, in the old mindset of Calvin back in Geneva, he trained everybody to do the same. They all learned the Bible. They all learned the kingdom. Some became judges. Some were military leaders. Some were business leaders. Some were educators. That was the role of the church. Equip everybody and send them where they belong. It wasn't just to build up the church. So I, I just see this movement as a movement where the people that are already in our churches are the ones we're looking to stimulate. And then from them, reach others and it, what, what's going to happen, I believe, is that this is going to change health and human services to become the way God wanted it in honoring him. But it's also going to bring in a harvest to our churches. Hopefully that's clear and look forward to hearing from you in the future.